Hey, what's up everybody? Landon with LMR.com. Uh, we're playing around in the shop today. We're gonna do an oil change on the 2024 Mustang GT. The procedure and the process we're gonna show today is gonna be applicable for the generation four five liter Coyote engine. For the 2024 model here, Ford calls for 10 quarts of 5W30 oil. And then if you're going to be uh, referencing the part number for the oil filter, this is the Motorcraft FL500S. What you see here is one of the LMR oil change kits that's currently available on the website. So you can buy this thing and we'll ship it directly to your door with all 10 quarts of oil and the oil filter. And I'll leave a link for you down in the description below. Uh, obviously what you don't see here are tools. Uh, you'll see me use uh, the tools as we progress through the video, but some of the obvious things here, jack, jack stands, if you don't have a fancy lift like we do, gloves, wrench sets, microfiber towels. I prefer microfiber towels over paper towels uh, because y'all have probably heard me talk about this in other videos. The paper towels to me just, they just suck really. Uh, they kind of lint, uh, whereas uh, even cheap microfiber towels when they're brand new, they tend to not lint. I like to use those, uh, plus they just clean up a little bit better in my own opinion. So microfiber towels, I've already said gloves, and then, uh, oh, cardboard, aluminum foil, or what they call a form of funnel. And what those little devices are uh, designed to do is you kind of position them uh, underneath your oil filter. So when you unscrew the oil filter from the uh, oil filter adapter on the engine block, you just don't get a bunch of oil running all over uh, your K-member and stuff like that and just basically dirtying up the whole area. So I've always just defaulted to cardboard uh, and that's what you're gonna see me use uh, in the video today. So I already have the 2024 supported uh, with a lift. So we'll go ahead and go up with it and uh, we'll get started. All right, so underneath the uh, car here, some definite changes uh, from the uh, previous generation model. I guess it's not as simple to access the oil filter, uh, but before I go ahead and drain the oil, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the uh, lower closeout tray, belly pan, whatever it is that you wanna call it. But uh, we have a uh, makeup of seven millimeter screws, push type retainers, and then the push type retainer that you have to dislodge the head uh, in order to remove it. So I'm gonna go around first and uh, remove all the seven millimeter fasteners and we'll let you know how many we remove. Okay, 15 seven millimeter screws. All right, so now to remove the push type retainers I was telling you about where you have to uh, dislodge the uh, head of it. I always like to work a little pick underneath there uh, to dislodge the little insert of the retainer first. And I just roll it out like that. So there's one of those. There's two right here in the center where the uh, secondary pan meets the uh, primary or frontward, rearward, however you want to look at it or word it. Sometimes you just got to tell who's boss. Now I'm going to assume there's supposed to be one right here, but it's missing. So that would make three of these type of retainers. And then the last retainer that I'm seeing here is just a traditional um, push type retainer that's flat. So you just need to work a, uh, a tool underneath it. Or you just get up in here and kind of work the tray loose some. So you can get your tool up underneath there because no one forward, these are too dang tight. Yep. Okay, so there's two of just the flat type push retainer. Okay, well let's see if we can get this lower closeout panel to budge. Okay, so I'm gonna work it towards the rear of the car to feed it past uh, the frontward or primary uh, lower closeout belly pan. Okay, yeah, you just pull it straight out. And there's our filter. Okay, so not the first time I've been under the 2024s, but for a lot of you watching this, this would be your first time seeing underneath one of these cars, but they switched back to a steel oil pan. Uh, the Gen 3 Coyote, which uh, was in the 2018 to 2023 Mustangs, had the composite oil pan. So it was like Ford switched back to the steel oil pan and they put just a regular old uh, drain plug or drain bolt back in there as well because the ones in the Gen 3 Coyotes were like several other engines um, in Ford models. They had the little plastic uh, 120 degree rotation plug uh, that you just uh, rotate and of course remove. That's a 15 millimeter bolt. 
So we'll get up here, we'll crack it loose. And then our oil drain. Which by the way, I think this car has about 2,300 miles on it. So not really due for an oil change, uh, but for what we get to do and what we like to do, uh, we're changing the oil. Uh, we drove the car all the way back from Ohio when we got it to kind of there in uh, late August. And then when we got the car, we, we dynoed it and then uh, let our employees drive it around, stuff like that. And we took it up to the uh, Texas Motor Speedway there for the LMR Cruise in. And then uh, just kind of uh, last week, really at the time of this video, I took it up to the Texas Motorplex there in Ennis, Texas and uh, drag raced the car. So I think it has about 2,300 miles on it, which we'll know exactly how much uh, here in just a moment when we hop back in the interior to uh, reset the oil life. But just looking at the oil on my fingers, it's clean. It's really clean. And two, while we, while we let this drain, uh, we can kind of have a little talking point of the infamous typewriter tick, uh, barbecue igniter tick. Uh, it's, it's referred to uh, in a few different manners, but typically what happens? It can happen at any point really in the car's life. Uh, there's, they haven't really pinpointed it to miles. A lot of people report that this noise happens after the first oil change. Um, I've been around these engines uh, quite a while. Have I torn them down as much as other people? No. And if you go look at the, at the document that Ford put out on this noise, is it's not detrimental to the engine and it's a normal operating characteristic of the five liter Coyote engine uh, in the Mustang or the F-150. I know personally, my wife has had two Coyote cars. She still has one of them. Granted, she doesn't drive them much, but she does drive them. Uh, did drive the one that she doesn't have now, uh, but uh, change the oil probably every year just because again they're not driven that much but neither car uh, developed uh, the uh, the typewriter tick or the barbecue uh, clicker noise and then um, I actually had a friend uh, who had a 2013 Coyote uh, and he beat the absolute dog crap out of this car and it made that noise I think from probably shoot around the 30,000 mile mark and he got rid of the car with a 120 something thousand miles didn't have a problem one um, I just know a lot of us, we spend the money on the car. You know, it's, it's a noise that you don't want to hear. Uh, you've seen people do additives like uh, Saratech and stuff like that. It's your car. You can go about it as you wish. Uh, I've never been one uh, to buy into fancy oils, uh, fancy additives and things like that. If they do help, yes, I may find myself using something like that. Uh, but I kind of just, uh, you know, stick with what the manufacturer recommends uh, to an extent because they do make changes. Uh, you know, they, they, they learn just like all of us. And, you know, throughout the development and throughout, you know, I guess, um, you know, these engines and things being in the wild, if you must, uh, you know, they, they learn from, from all of us, uh, you know, by driving the car. So a little long winded on the barbecue tick uh, or, the, uh, or the typewriter uh, tick noise uh, that these five liter coyotes uh, can can have, but uh, just figure I'd give you my two cents on it for, for what it's worth. We'll let our oil drain out uh, to a slow drip. Uh, this is kind of where I start to get a little crazy and start wiping some things down. I'm not going to do that today, uh, but uh, this is when, you know, you got your music turned up and you're just, uh, you know, you're hanging out in your garage uh, having a good old time. But uh, we'll let this slow to a drip and we'll come back to you installing the drain plug. All right, so our oil has slowed to a drip. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. I always like to run it down just before it touches. And everybody's method's different, you know. I like watching other people change oil, simple as this is. You know, it's something that a lot of us know how to do. But it's neat to see how other people do things because you just never know what you might learn or you may want to implement in your own process. But uh, like I said, I usually uh, run it down just before it touches the pan. And then we'll just give a little spritz here of some bright clean. And then that's when I make contact uh, with the oil pan. There, I just turn it with my fingers. Now, torque spec on that is 19 pound feet. So uh, for any of you out there uh, that really love your torque specs, 19 pound feet is what you wanna do here on your drain plug. I've never really been one uh, to torque drain plugs. I just tighten them, uh, but then again, I guess you could say the years I've been wrenching, I uh, kind of know what 19 pound feet feels like, foot pounds, whatever. You just don't want to over tighten it. And then you may have to give one little final wipe around here as it probably squishes a little bit more oil out. 
So before we zip our uh, drain pan underneath the uh, oil filter, I always like to go up there and loosen it by hand first. This is also when I like to put gloves on. That way I can actually get a grip on the uh, oil filter. This is the first oil change on this car. So this won't be overly tight and I'm loosening it right, loosening it right now. But I always like to crack them loose so I know I can get it with one hand and that's when I get everything positioned. Also, another note too, if you have a car uh, that may have some miles on it, which right now at the time of this video, you won't have a car with too many miles, but you know, if gravel road or something like that, you may have bought a car secondhand at some point down the road. Uh, if this is really dirty under here, which it may or may not be because of the lower closeout panel, but you just never know, uh, you may hit that with like some brake clean and then a uh, shot of compressed air uh, just to pull off any uh, of that uh, potential debris that could be around the filter area. Here's my deflection device. Uh, again, good old, some good old boy stuff right here. A uh, piece of cardboard, kind of crinkled it, rolled it up. I uh, had to trim it down to kind of fit this area. Uh, this will make it uh, a little more difficult to get to the oil filter. So what you'll have to do, you have to come over the top of the K-member right here, just to the front of the uh, inner outer tie rod on the steering rack. And then you can uh, loosen it up and then let some of that oil run out. Uh, before you work it down the cardboard. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do. Get this little thing in position. So it's kind of dark in here, so may or may not see a whole lot going on, but I've got that, I've got this cardboard shoved all the way up under that oil filter adapter. Okay, so uh, oil has slowed to a drip from the oil filter. So once you unscrew it and remove it from the oil filter adapter, tilt it back forward so you can get the rest of the oil out and then kind of just work it down the cardboard there until you can uh, grab it with your other hand and you can set it out of your way. Surgical. So before I pull the cardboard, I always like to come up with a clean microfiber towel and kind of blot the area. That way I don't have any serious drips. And I just kind of slide the cardboard out of my way or down through the uh, area here in the K-member. Get my drain pan out of the way. So there's our, uh, oil filter adapter on the engine block. Uh, we just wanna make sure this is nice and clean. And then while I prepare my oil filter, I usually just take a uh, microfiber towel and just set it uh, kind of where some oil could potentially drip uh, from that oil filter adapter, but uh, it shouldn't be much. Okay, so here's our oil filter. Uh, I always like to uh, clean the O-ring off with a little bit of brake clean and a uh, microfiber towel. Uh, it's also important to note right now, what can happen is this O-ring can stay attached to the oil filter adapter. And uh, if you're not paying attention, you'll double up the gasket. You don't wanna do that. So make sure that uh, existing O-ring from the filter that you removed uh, came off with the filter. So um, wipe the O-ring down. And then what I always like to do, I don't like to just you know, blast it with some compressed air, but I'll just kinda blow it out a little bit. I don't know, something I've always done makes me feel good. But uh, once we do that, uh, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll pre-soak the uh, oil filter some. I always kind of like to go halfway. Uh, whoops, some on the side there, uh, but that's fine. Uh, then I take just a thin film of fresh engine oil and lubricate this O-ring. And believe it or not, the Ford Workshop manual actually tells you to not lubricate that O-ring because it probably would skew torque specs. It would skew torque specs uh, for that matter. Uh, and they recommend uh, 180 inch pounds, no, 144 inch pounds, and then 180 degrees of rotation. Every single oil filter uh, that I've ever done, uh, aside from, you know, particularities of like GT350, GT350R, flat plane crank stuff, uh, which obviously that was the only uh, Mustang that had a flat plane crank engine where the 350, 350R stuff where, you know, a torque spec is fairly crucial uh, because of engine harmonics and things. I just run these down hand tight uh, and then I kind of just go a little bit more and I have never, ever, ever had an issue out of all the oil that I've ever changed. Okay, so we'll zip back over here to the car. Uh, we did have a little bit of oil run out of the oil filter adapter, so we'll kind of blot it up a little bit. And then we'll take our new filter, work a little quickly here, screw it on until it makes contact with the oil filter adapter. And like I said, you'll just go until it starts to get snug and then kind of just give it one more light turn. Now, I know our hand strength uh, is different with everybody. Uh, so for those of you that, you know, kind of 
kind of got some Popeye in you, don't get too crazy. Okay, now, uh, just because we just did it, I always, always like to jump up here for a peace of mind, give it one kind of last, okay, it's tight type of thing. And then even though we tighten our drain plug already, I come back here, same thought process. Peace of mind to make sure it's tight. And then if you wanna give anything a last once over from a final wipe down perspective, uh, now is the time to do it. All right, so going back on with the uh, lower closeout panel here, reverse the removal steps. You'll feed it underneath the frontward lower closeout panel and just align all of the uh, fastener locations. And because of this, it will somewhat stay in position, uh, but to get it to hold uh, where it really needs to be, I'm gonna go back in with those flat push pins, uh, which is right here more towards the, uh, kind of the, towards the rear of the lower closeout panel. And that'll help hold it in place uh, while we get all the other retainers reinstalled. Uh-oh. No, don't do it. Don't. Oh, come on, man. Way to go, Lando. Take two. That's kind of tricky. Like, almost annoyingly tricky. Oh, this could have been so different. All right, 2025 model year. Well, won't be the same, mark my word. 2025 model year, we'll have a trap door for the oil. I'm calling it now. Ford, if you're watching this video, you need to do it. All right, so all the plastic push type retainers have been reinstalled. Now we're just gonna zip around and uh, reinstall all of these seven millimeter screws. It's good to point out uh, when you go to snug these down or tighten them down, just go till they make contact like that. You don't have to get these things get these things crazy tight because what I see all the time, people driving down the road and these things are all just flopping around because they didn't get put back on right or the fastener got pulled through the uh, lower closeout tray. Okay, so now we got to fill the engine up with some oil. Uh, obviously, you want to open your hood. Uh, but for the 2024s, there's no, you know, long Millennium Falcon looking uh, engine cover. You know, it's kind of a smaller uh, profile here. So uh, here's your oil fill. You'll need you a good clean funnel. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick, and then we'll fill this thing up with some oil. Okay, so funnel in. Uh, we're not going to show you every quart going in this engine. But again, 10 quarts of uh, 5W30. Okay, so we got all 10 quarts of our oil into the engine. So we're gonna pull our funnel. I always like to hold a microfiber towel underneath there, as you saw. And then um, inspect your oil fill cap. Um, with this thing dirty, crusty, nasty, uh, clean it up with some brake cleaning your microfiber towel. But because this car is so new, and we haven't really driven it in any harsh condition or environment and stuff like that, we're gonna go right back in with our uh, oil fill cap. Now, something that is a pet peeve of mine is the orientation of how this sits. You can install this. Oh no, look, you can't. They finally fixed it. So you can only install this with the logo and the lettering in a, facing a legible fashion, facing a legible manner. Used to, you could install this, you know, 180 degrees out the other direction. Now you can't. How about that? Cool. Okay, so to uh, reset the oil life uh, on a 2024 Mustang, oh, that heartbeat. Uh, you want a key on, uh, so don't have your foot uh, on the brake as the engine will start. It's not gonna hurt it, but I always reset the oil with the engine off, just, just the way I've always done it uh, on vehicles. On your infotainment screen, um, you wanna go home, which we're already home. Uh, you wanna come up here to the uh, top right 
section of the, uh, of the infotainment, you're gonna hit settings. And then we're going to scroll, depending on where you're at. Uh, typically it may default just to the first page, uh, but you're gonna find vehicle, select it, and then we're gonna scroll to the very bottom. Then we're gonna see oil life. Uh, of course, we're at 71% because we're at uh, 22, 2,294 miles, but I think I said 2,300 miles earlier, so wow, pretty good guess. Uh, but we'll just press and hold right here to reset the oil. And we're back to 100%. And if you're one of those guys that like to write it down, uh, write the date and all that, go ahead. I always do it as well. I usually keep some notes in my phone of uh, when I change the oil and all that good stuff. So uh, we'll start the car just because we can. You usually want to check the oil hot on level ground, but I always let it idle down and we'll go ahead and check our dipstick. All right, dipstick, uh, just like every other coyote right here on the driver's side valve cover. Take it out, wipe it, put it back in. Okay, we'll pull it out. Check our earl. Gonna be real hard to see on camera, but that's right in the crosshatch. That's where we want it. All good. Okay, well, I think that's a wrap on how to change the oil in your 2024 Mustang GT with the Generation 4 5 liter Coyote engine. What you don't see on this car is an oil separator. Um, for those of you that do have a uh, 2024 Mustang GT, uh, I would strongly invest in an oil separator and you're probably gonna see us do a video on that here very shortly of installing one on this car. But uh, everything we use today, um, product wise, we'll leave a link for you down in the description. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, just drop us a comment and uh, we'll, get you, we'll get you answered. So uh, we'll close this one out. Uh, if you find value in what we do, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, turn on notifications. And then until uh, we catch you in the next one for all things 2024 Mustang, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR. <laughs>